And for all you guys who don't know, all these squiggly lines of a lot of new traders who, who, who you know, who don't, don't know anything about the PS60 theory, they keep asking, well, what's with all these crazy little lines? These crazy little lines that people think are crazy, they're actually not. Uh, they all demonstrate supply zones. This is the area where emotional buyers will get rejected. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, crazy market, right? So let's back up to yesterday. Uh, yesterday, very, very uh, big, aggressive move down, okay? Um, today, I was setting up we talked about in last night's video. I, I thought today was going to be an incredible, incredible, uh, really big premium day. Uh, we talked about last night uh, Amazon stopping right on daily support, Netflix stopping on daily support, on and on and on, right? There was a whole slew of, of beta names. And I woke up, I had a great plan for uh, today's session. And then you looked at the pre-market futures and they weren't down a lot. They really were not. And you sat there and you, go, you say to yourself, all right, let me see what's going on here. Literally every single beta stock today just got absolutely murdered uh, pre-market. And again, we, we weren't talking about like Amazon down 10, Netflix down three, right? We were talking about an incredible amount of aggression this morning. Matter of fact, when you look at what the queues did, and this is kind of a five minute view on the queues, you had it from the closing price of yesterday to the bottom of today's push at the open, you had an $11 point, you had an $11 gap down in the queues. That's tremendous, just absolutely tremendous. And what basically happened was it, in the process, took out 100% of my game plan. Like literally 100% of my game plan uh, was set on fire. I was hoping for uh, a flat open today or a gap up open today. And unfortunately, the one thing we do not uh, have control is what happens in the overnight cash session. And the market got absolutely annihilated this morning. It was horrific. Uh, every level that we talked about uh, for the last several days, right? We talked about this 19 level. We talked about the 17 level. The only level that didn't get violated is this whole macro channel that we talked about around the 305 level. It literally lost everything, 19, it lost uh, the 50 day moving average, went all the way down to 11. And the one thing that you, you have to do uh, when you have a game plan and you, know, you have it on paper, you're already mentally prepared for what you need to see happen. And what doesn't happen, you, you can't panic. And, that, and that's the most important thing. You cannot panic. You cannot go to plan B right away. You, you need to see how things kind of play out here. And normally what we talk about is if you have a gap down market, a very, very aggressive gap down market, usually the value is going to be to the upside, okay, usually. Um, however, if a lot of stocks do not gap down very, very aggressively, you could still salvage some things potentially still to the, to the downside. And if you look at the pivots today, there was some pretty aggressive pivots, but more important, and, and, I, and I think this is the most important part of kind of tonight's video, and really does echo how really aggressive this bull market has been uh, over the last four and a half years, the ability for the bulls not only to shake off some of the losses that they, uh, that they had this morning, but they did a phenomenal job, an absolute rock star job of reclaiming uh, not only this lower Bollinger Band, I, I think reclaiming the lower Bollinger Band of 316 would have been a huge victory and it would have been still three dollars out of the way for the market to kind of reclaim for higher prices to get to wake up but not only did the the, did the bulls reclaim that lower bollinger band it reclaimed that 50 day moving average as well at 319 and pushed right into the close and you you have to give uh your hat off to the bulls they did a fantastic job um if you're a perma bear for the last four and a half years, you really at, at some point have to turn around and say, what the heck do I have to do to get a continuation for more than one day? It's just the most amazing part. And a lot of the perma bears where they are in to kind of a, a view of where the market is, a lot of them, you know, you can have this big massive move in 24 hours. A lot of people have really been fighting the market for such a long time that all it did 
for the last 24 hours was kind of get them back in the game. And once you had that rally back, it was just absolutely astounding how strong the bull market continues to be. And, you know, if you look at one of the biggest victims uh, just over the last several days has been Tesla, right? And, we, you know, we had some pivots in Tesla today, uh, one off that pre-market level, one in the middle of the day, a lunchtime move as well. Uh, Kathy Wood came out, you know, again, she's been the rock star on Tesla. She's been in this thing for years and years. And everybody talked about, they, when she talked about a $4,000 price target, everybody laughed at her. Well, <laughs> that's why there's only one Kathy Wood. And she came out and basically said, I, th I think the interview was with Bloomberg, and she said she was buying a lot of Tesla today, and that's great. And then this is the ax in the stock, and Tesla really did very, very well, uh, not only uh, closing near the high of the day, but if you look at the after hours high, it's just really taking out, it took out today's high as well, up another uh, 15, 17 points or so. Um, but again, when you look at the massive move that Tesla had just in the last you know week or so, went from 800 all the way down to 618, it's just amazing, and you, and you hear people talking about it on social media the way they're talking about it. Like Tesla went down ten cents. I mean, guys, I don't know how many sh how many shares some of you guys are, are, are trading, but a two hundred fifty point move in a week and a half that's that's kind of a lot. I get it, you know, you love it, but that's kind of a lot. Um, here's the downside, right? Here's here's definitely the downside of where we where we are. Everything that happened happened. Uh, the bulls got hurt uh, in the last couple of days. The bears, obviously, if you short it in the hole, we always talk about the live webinar, do not shorten the hole. So if Amazon is on your watch list, uh, at, you know, and again, here's last night's watch list, just to give you an idea, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of where I'd like those prices yesterday and where they opened. So I was looking at Amazon at 31.70 short. This thing was $60 below where I wanted to short. Neo this morning was like at 44. I mean, they didn't even give you an opportunity uh, on the short side. GRTS was a $14 stock, went to 12, right? Netflix pre-market was at 522. I mean, Snow went down to like 255. Etsy went down, was like, was like 201. So my literally my whole watch list today just got blown up. Space, even space, you say to yourself, a $46 stock, right? Futures only down, it was like 80 handles on the Dow. How much could it possibly do down? This thing was 44 offer pre-market. So literally the whole watch list got absolutely destroyed. And you have a choice uh, when you are trading. You know, you have it, you have that choice. You could either chase, you know, chase price action, which is never a good thing, because again, you're chasing continuation. You're not chasing, well, excuse me, you're not trading the pivot, or you kind of kind of wait or kind of move to the side. Um, and we started watching some of these names and they did get hit. And the next thing you know, the market started getting stronger and Netflix confirmed aggressively. Uh, Amazon confirmed back to the upside aggressively. And it, it really is setting up into a kind of a, a, a weird day for tomorrow. Here's the good news. Let me tell you the bad news, right? That's the good news. The bulls reclaimed the 50 day. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. It, again, we always speak with the point of devil's advocate. We always want everybody to know where the potential problems lie. There's no such thing as putting on the rose colored glasses and say, all right, Q's held, the, the, that's the low of the market, that's it, this is the generational low, back to the high. It doesn't work that way. So the good news, yes, we reclaimed uh, the 50 day moving average. Here's the bad news. When you look at all the mega cap names uh, in the Q's, you're gonna no notice something very, very, uh, very, you know, very obvious. Here's the 60 minute channels, right? And for all you guys who don't know, all these squiggly lines of a lot of new traders who, who, who you know, who don't, don't know anything about the PS60 theory, they keep asking, well, what's with all these crazy little lines? These crazy little lines that people think are crazy, they're actually not. Uh, they all demonstrate supply zones. This is the area where emotional buyers will get rejected over and over again. So although Amazon did a great job today and reclaiming, and we'll, we'll get into the pivots in a second, you know, reclaiming 3180 and put up a $25 candle, it's all great. But look at all the trees in the forest. You see them? You see what the problem is, guys? All these numbers, all these little lines represent rejection areas. If you look, for example, like a Facebook, right? Same thing. You have a lot of supply until it starts reclaiming, you know, 268, 269. That's me a lot of problems getting above that. Look at Apple, same thing, right? 
Look at all the supply zone. Although Apple did a great job and reclaimed uh, the 124.50 level and traded right back in the supply, look, look at every single time it hits supply, what happens? So look at all these trees in the forest that we have to go through. The challenge for tomorrow's session is, and a lot of traders are gonna see this whole thing called chop, right? Because again, we're still looking at really condensed channels. It's going to be very, very tough for you to find a lot of clean plays. Are there some clean plays? Yes, there are, absolutely. Uh, Tesla, uh, you know, I'm assuming between this channel here and this channel here, there's a lot of upside. When you look at Zoom, for example, right, you can see at least a clean channel to the next supply. When you look at Netflix, for example, right, you can see up here, if it can just take out this whole channel here, then it has a lot of room to, you know, a lot of room to run. But the biggest problem is tomorrow, even if we get a, a dead cat bounce, again, that's a big if, but on the surface, at least we like what we're seeing, at least from today's close, the biggest problem you're going to run into for tomorrow's session is finding those names that at least have room to go from supply to supply. So tomorrow's session, you shouldn't think home run. Tomorrow's session, you should be thinking hit and run, scalp, cash flow, whatever the case may be, right? Quick cash flow trades, because a lot of these ranges are not gonna be a 10, 15, $20 channel. A lot of these ranges might be a $2 channel, might be a $3 channel, might be a dollar channel. You know, it all depends uh, what you're looking for, what you can find in terms of value. So for tomorrow's session, there's a time and a place to get very, very aggressive. And there's a time and a place to understand, hey, we're still under supply. We did a great job today as the bulls, right? We the bulls did a fantastic job today reclaiming macro levels, but now they're gonna need a couple of days to kind of go sideways and up, sideways and up, sideways and up to really start taking control. And if you look at where the next necessary area of interest is, the bulls really need to get above the 325, baby steps. They're not gonna go from 325 to the five day supply of 328, the shortest macro uh, supply, so they have to go baby steps. So is it possible you get a very, very quote unquote choppy session tomorrow? Of course it is. That's the whole point of understanding supply zones. That's the whole point of understanding emotional buyers meeting technical sellers and what we did today as a market, right? What we did today as market participants, you have to feel good of the whole bull thesis, but from the day to day, you have to be very, very careful and understand that number one, supply zones are real. Number two, they're all in front of you. But if you don't trade with a lot of quote unquote silly little lines, then you don't know where the bodies are buried. You don't know where the grenades possibly can, uh, can explode on your feet. So for all you guys who don't trade in the 60 minute channels, switch over, right? Switch over just to see what, what I'm talking about. Look at the 60 minute interval, start incorporating a lot of these moving average, um, moving averages, and I use a lot of them. I really do, and here's all of them. You can see all of them here. There, you know, I use Bollinger Bands. I use linear regression lines. Uh, the five, the 10, the, the 20, the 50, the 100, 150 day moving average. I know it's a lot of stuff. I know a lot of crazy lines. A lot of people say, well, it's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah too much, right? If I, need, if I needed more, if I could possibly get more, I'd get more. Um, so again, that's not gonna work for everybody, but this has been kind of giving us a guide of where the next measure potential is. And technical analysis is pretty specific. So if you don't have a supply zone in front of you that you can't, you know, you can't really identify. Well, then there's there's a reason sometimes stocks stop um, on random sessions. But if you really look at it, random sessions are really not uh, too random. So again, just kind of a, a little tip for those who don't use them, uh, just to maybe incorporate them to see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Again, crazy session, man. It, again, people people love the word volatility. I don't love the word vol volatility. I like the stocks, I trade the stocks with the highest beta, which basically means the, the, the biggest average true range, but I don't like volatility. I don't like when Amazon has a 150 point reversal or two, it, it sounds good on paper, but if you look at it, most of the moves are taking place on one candle. So you're, you're constantly putting yourself in a position that you're chasing the same move and the last thing you wanna do. So the word volatility is not a really good word, right? Um, Things are all good until things get volatile. And a volatile market for me, uh, I like boring. I like predictable. I like lethargic. And you know these 150 point moves uh, within two channels, ooh, very very scary. So that's kind of what we talked about this morning. Uh, most of our stocks are way below our pivots from last night. I'm going to start uh, looking at the next channel of interest. Um, you know, and I'll start putting in uh, more levels. So here is the first pivot of the day. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys have problems uh, disseminating quotes. There's a lot of latency this morning. Um, 
257.20, 257.00 if it builds below can flush. Uh, macro is 254.80. And Facebook, you know, it had a nice move there. It went down like two and change, but you could see where it stopped perfectly, right? And here's the whole point. Here is the 257. It went down like two and change and held this really now becomes uh, a triple bottom for uh, later use. But, you know, nice move there. Uh, GRTS, there was nothing you could do there. It opened up at 1395, but it was so spready. They took this thing down to 12. Uh, LI got killed. Uh, 2630, 26. If it builds below, it can flush more. Here was LI, right? So here's the 2630. Uh, where is it? Where is it? 2630, right here, right? So here's the 2630. It took that out, went all the way down to 23. Again, stocks were really getting hit uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, LI was obviously getting hit here. Uh, for experienced traders only, uh, new traders, I said, leave the room. 670 held three times. If it, if it builds below, can flush more. Uh, it got destroyed. Tesla got absolutely destroyed. I know a lot of you guys were holding this thing uh, overnight. So here was the 670 right here. You see this three candles here, 670. It took out 670 and just, just got murdered. Went all the way down to 619. Just a crazy move on Tesla. Uh, take on the way down, obviously destroyed. VeriSign, and here, I got bored of this trade and I, I covered it right before uh, this thing got hit. <laughs> This is sometimes what I always say, when you, when you try to trade stocks that you know their tendencies, this thing was just too thin. Uh, 190, 50, 190, if it builds below, can flush. I just got bored of it. I really did. I got bored of it and I got out. And next thing you know, this thing just got murdered, went down to 87, more moron. Anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, and here's, you know, and then we started seeing the market, uh, obviously, uh, firm up here, and you could see the levels start to build. Uh, Netflix, 534, 50, 535 needs to build. Uh, here was Netflix, right? Here's the channel on Netflix that we talked about, the 534, 50, 535. It took that out, had a big, big move here, traded all the way up to the 548s. And again, I'm watching this channel here. If the market can continue its dead cat bounce, uh, you could get another move there. So nice move on Netflix. Uh, Amazon 3182, 3183 needs to build. Here was Amazon, right? So here's the 3182, 3183. You know, put up a 2022 $20, dollar move on Amazon as well. Again, it's gonna be a little bit of challenge for tomorrow. Uh, and here is a pivot right before uh, lunchtime. 675 is held uh, the bottom of the 16 minute channel. If it builds below, it can flush. And here's a quick trade uh, for all you guys for lunchtime. Here's the five minute view of that 670 level. You call it, where is it? 60 minute view. Uh, yeah, right here. You see the 670, 675? It took out the 675 and traded down all the way to 668 and obviously a big reversal there. So crazy action in the markets. Um, you know, this is a market not for children, man. This is not a. This is not to like, you know, throw it against the wall and hope, hope it sticks to YOLO market. This is a very thought out, methodical way. And I, I, I continue to stress the importance of being an adult. I don't care if you're, you're 15 years old, uh, 55 years old, or 105 years old. If you don't treat your money with with care, or with responsibility, right, with with loving uh, nature, believe me, somebody else will. Guys, stay safe. God bless you all. I love you, and I'll see you all tomorrow.